Are you sick of Windows and ready for a change? Maybe you're unhappy with the built-in advertisements, or you don't feel like your privacy is being taken seriously. Perhaps you've thought about switching to Linux, but with so many different versions, it can get overwhelming. Join me in this video to find a beginner-friendly Linux distro that suits your needs. Before we get into my top 5, there are a few things to understand first. A Linux distro is a term we use to refer to the operating system. They're all Linux, but each one comes with its own set of default programs, a default desktop environment, and they all generally look and work a bit differently. So what is a desktop environment? It's what you see when you log into your computer. It's how your files, windows, programs and taskbar look and behave. If you can remember that the desktop environment is how things look and behave, that'll do. The next concept is the display server. Think of the display server as a layer of software that allows your Linux computer to show your desktop environment on the screen instead of just a command line terminal. The most common ones are called X11 and Wayland. The last thing to keep in mind is that Linux is not Windows. Yeah, obvious right? But seriously, I think people can forget that it's just fundamentally different. Switching to Linux is a process, and one that you need to take a little time with. That said, let's get into my top 5 Linux distros for beginners. The first flavour of Linux I'm going to show is Linux Mint. The main version of Mint uses the Cinnamon desktop environment with the X11 display server. It's what I always recommend to new users, and the one that I've been using on my desktop PC for nearly a year now. What I love about it is how intuitive it is to use, and that it's really easy for people coming from Windows. Take a look at how the file manager works, it's really easy to navigate with minimal clutter. Mint also comes with a software manager, which allows you to download lots of useful programs in a really easy way. Some other Linux distributions don't offer this, and instead you have to use the command line to search for and install packages from repositories. You're not going to be able to find every piece of software you want in these graphical software managers. But the distros that include a friendly software manager like this, allow you to rely less on the terminal method. And it's not to say it's difficult to do it that way, but it's just not as friendly as a graphical program with a search bar. If you've never used Cinnamon before, it's lovely. Some desktop environments can feel a bit cobbled together, but this one feels quite refined. The only irritation I've had with Mint is that when I had a multi-monitor setup and the monitors had different refresh rates, this didn't play nicely with gaming under X11, which tries to draw all of your display output at the same rate. This is also configuration dependent, so you might not experience this issue. So, should you try Mint? Why not? It's a great all-rounder that makes switching to Linux as easy as it can get. It's also widely used, so community support forums are thriving should you need to seek support. The next distro is Ubuntu. It uses the GNOME desktop environment, which is quite sleek, along with the more modern Wayland display server, which solves some of those multi-refresh rate gaming issues I mentioned before. Ubuntu is actually what Linux Mint is based on, and as one of the most widely used distros with great support and community forums, it's a good pick for new users. Much like Mint, Ubuntu is for people looking for an easy Linux experience. It also has a great software center for easy installation of programs, a modern and sleek feeling interface that's free of clutter, and it should feel quite intuitive to most new users. So should you choose Ubuntu? Look, I prefer Mint, but it's really a matter of personal choice and your needs. You could always try them both and see which one you prefer. And often with Mint versus Ubuntu, it could come down to Cinnamon versus GNOME or X11 versus Wayland, and which combo will work best for you, your hardware and use case. If you're tossing up between these two distros, maybe do a bit of research in that area and find out what might work best for you. Continuing the theme of distros that are based on Ubuntu, this next one is Pop OS. The desktop environment is called Cosmic, which is based on GNOME and it uses the Wayland display server. It feels really smooth and clean, and it's also in rapid active development, so users can expect bug fixes and support into the future. This OS is built by a company called System76, who have optimised it to run really well on their own hardware. But that's not to say you can't install it on your own machine. The standout feature for me is that it promises good hybrid GPU support. This is great for gaming laptops that come with both a built-in and dedicated graphics card. It also has graphics drivers installed for both AMD and Nvidia by default. If you check out the Pop OS website, 
the first thing you'll notice is that it's trying to be really accessible and friendly, and explains things in plain language. I saw a comment on Reddit recently that said, System76 is the best thing to happen to desktop Linux in a long time. I'm not sure if it's the best thing, but I'd definitely give this one a try if you're looking for something to game on that's Ubuntu based, but with a fresh set of ideas. While we're on Pop! OS, let's check out PCBWay, this video's sponsor. For anyone looking for CNC machining, 3D printing, and prototype PCBs, they've got you covered. Head over to PCBWay.com and click on the service type you need, and fill out the quote form. You can then choose the build time and shipping method. Then go to your shopping cart, find the corresponding order, and this is where you can upload the file that you'll be providing for printing. This might be a Gerber file, a .pcb, .pcb doc, or .cam file. When you're ready, click submit, order now, and complete payment. And that's it. That's how easy it is to start your next geeky project. Check them out via the link in the description. So, to break the pattern of Ubuntu-based OSs, the next distro is Fedora KDE Spin. As the name suggests, this flavour of Linux uses the KDE Plasma desktop environment, which runs on Wayland. It's the distro I'm using on my laptop, and I really love it. I mainly use my laptop for daily tasks, but thanks to the strong integrated GPU, I can also game on it. I really like Fedora because it feels very modern, with great support for much of the very latest hardware. It has regular updates, which means you get to run the latest versions of your software, but it's also not overwhelming. KDE Plasma isn't my favourite desktop environment, but it's perfectly pleasant. The thing is with Fedora is that it can be slightly more involved when it comes to troubleshooting. You'll also likely come up against a few more situations that require it, but since it's such a popular distro, it does have some decent community resources to help you out if you get stuck. It was a perfect choice for my laptop because it supports my newish integrated GPU. The new drivers are built right into the kernel and Fedora likes to keep the kernel up to date. So, should you try out Fedora with the KDE spin? Why not? It's another good all-rounder that appeals to new and experienced users alike, and the modern features make it feel cutting edge. And for the last one, I'm going to throw you a curveball with Manjaro Linux. Manjaro offers multiple desktop environment options, but I tried the Plasma KDE variety, like what we just explored in Fedora. Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, which is usually what very experienced users like to use, but it's much more friendly for beginners. What I like about Manjaro is that it has the internals of Arch Linux, but without a steeper learning curve. It's rolling release, meaning you'll always have access to the latest software, but it's been polished and optimised to work well right out of the box. Manjaro's hardware support is great, especially if you're into gaming, as it has the latest drivers available. Like Arch Linux, you'll find yourself having to dive into deeper troubleshooting for certain configurations and use cases. But if you're a beginner who's looking to get right into the nitty gritty of Arch, this one might be for you. So, what should you choose? If you want to keep it simple, I'd say choose Mint or Ubuntu. But to get the best result for you, I recommend you do a bit of research first. For example, I inferred in this video that distros using Wayland might be better for gaming but that can also be quite hardware dependent. So check out those community forums to see what distro might work best for you, or if you feel like it, just give one a try. Check out the other videos on my channel where I show you how to switch to Linux, and my other video where I give a more in-depth tour of Linux Mint. I hope this video helped you, and if it did, why not leave a like and check out my Kofi page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.